welcome back. For those that follow the channel, you know why I'm doing this review. But for those that aren't following it that closely, let me bring you back up to speed. About a month and a half ago, I first showed off this Parnas, which is an homage to the Patek Philippe Nautilus line. And I showed it off to demonstrate that Miyota has quietly upgraded some of their 8 series movements to have hacking. And at the end of that video, I showed it off as well as three other AliExpress watches, and asked you to vote on which one you were most interested in. The winner that was chosen would be reviewed first and given away at the end of its video. The winner by far was the Corgiat Railmaster Homage, and it won with a 2 to 1 ratio over the second place winner, which was this Parnas. But there was a big enough response for that Parnas that I decided to review it as soon as I possibly could, as well as also include it in that giveaway, which is today, and I'll be giving it away at the end of that video. Now that we're all caught up, let's dive right in. The case is listed as 316 stainless, and it really follows the overall design of the Nautilus. It's very square and honestly a bit blocky, and it has these very short angular lugs. One difference, however, is that it doesn't have this bulge or opposite crown guard on the left, which I think I actually prefer here, as the case is already just a little large, and I think removing that does help streamline it, if only a bit. Now it's listed as being 42 millimeters wide, which it is if you're going from the 9 to the 3 and completely ignoring the crown guard. And again, I'm glad that that hump on the left is gone, otherwise this really would be a 44, which is also what the length is when you go down from the 12 to the 6. With the crown, it's 46 millimeters, and meanwhile the lug to lug is sitting just over 51, so it's a little long, but I do think it's livable. As for thickness, it's actually pretty good at 11.6 millimeters. Now lug and strap width is 22, which is actually what I'd expect for the size. And the Parnas does have a good weight, sitting just under 100 grams. And that's actually something that did impress me when I first picked it up, which is in stark contrast to a lot of other watches you get from AliExpress, where they feel much lighter than they should. Now price is gonna be right around $100, give or take. It really just depends on the time of year and what sales are going on. The top of the case and bezel has this vertical brushing, which contrasts to the polish on the sides, and that polish then continues to the back of the case where you have a screw down exhibition case back. And for those that like to tinker, from the look of this one, it does look like you can remove the movement from the back, rather than some other AliExpress watches where you have to remove the top bezel. The overall finishing I think is good for the price here, and it really feels like something you would find on a more expensive watch. The overall shape of the bezel is really defined by these slight curves and just really short angles that surround a large round crystal, which I did double check and it is sapphire. But this design I think gives it a real contrast in geometry from the case below it, which I think helps the dial to just pop and really stand out visually. And it's that dial as well as the case shape that really identifies this watch as a Nautilus homage, where the dial has these very distinct horizontal grooves, combined with a metallic sunburst effect. And this is really what initially attracted me to the watch, and really raised my curiosity about how good this could actually look. There are actually five different versions available of the Parnas, and I was really tempted by the copper brown dial version, but I really didn't want a gold case, so I ultimately went for this blue one. And I have to say that the effect of the dial is very cool and very striking. But it's also very dependent on the light, which really alters how dark or how light that blue coloring gets. And I think in some ways you almost have to see this in person to fully appreciate it. Now at the very edge of the dial you have these applied hour indicators, which are really simple silver sticks with white loom. And at the 3 o'clock position you do have a full size stick next to the date window. And this is different than the real Nautilus, which just leaves out the indicator completely. But here that date window is moved in quite a bit, which I think has to do more with the choice of movements and that it doesn't extend all the way to the edge of the dial. The date window is too small, but it is nicely framed. And while I think it interrupts the flow of the dial, I don't think it does by much. More importantly, however, is the text on the dial, which is painted on and I think they could have done this a little bit better. The font is just too large for the ridges below it, so it seems that it just flows over. So it results in the logo at the top just looking a little scrunched. And a few of the letters on the bottom just look cut off, so I think they really could have done a better job here. 
but for the price, I'm not going to complain too much. And I think it's easily forgivable when you really look at how good the rest of the dial is. And if you've looked at these before and you're curious, the dial here may be worth the price of admission by itself. The hands are sword shaped. They're very thin with a silver outline that's then filled with white loom. And those silver outlines are always difficult to film. They're ultimately just really reflective, and many times they just seem to be reflecting the black lens. But in person, they do look good against that blue dial. The second hand is a stick, but again, it's very thin. And it seems to have this pitchfork-like counterbalance, which I'm not really sure the reasoning for, as I don't think it matches the source. In fact, I think it reminds me more of an Accutron logo. But regardless of the reasoning, I think it does look good on the dial. But again, because it's so thin and there's no loom on the second hand, there really isn't much contrast, so I think it really gets lost as it circles the dial at times. Overall, I think the hands do look good, and the white loom on the hour and minute hand do contrast nicely with the blue dial, at least when it looks more darker blue than lighter. And while I think they are proportionally close to the source material, I personally think they're a little too thin and a little too short. So if I could really change one thing about this watch, it would probably be the hands. Which is something you can always do with a mod project. And now the loom, which do remember that this is an AliExpress watch, so you do need to keep your expectations in check. And comparing this to regular watches, it's really subpar. But when you compare it to AliExpress watches, I think it's actually one of the better ones. And for comparison, I first threw this up against my Cadison Imperial which I think is okay as far as AliExpress watches go. And in contrast, I put it up also against my Vostok Amphibia, which again, I think is okay when you compare it to regular watches. As you can see, everything starts out nice and bright, but the hands do quickly fade. They don't quite make it to that 40 minute mark, but they do last longer than the Cadison and almost as long as the Railmaster. What's interesting, however, is the loom on the dial as it's still easily visible after 40 minutes. So while the loom on the dial is good, it's kind of useless without the hands. As for the movement, we do have a Miyota 821A, which is really the decorated version of the 8215. But more importantly, the 821As are actually being upgraded to have hacking. Although I think I do need to point out that there's no guarantee you're gonna get one that hacks, as there are still some older movements circulating around but as those get used up, the odds of getting a newer one increase and getting one that hacks. Anyway, the movement also hand winds, and you should have around a 40 hour power reserve. Although because of that upgrade, I did check the power reserve, and here I found it to be closer to 45. And my luck with Miyota movements in terms of accuracy has continued, where I found this one to be losing only about two and a half seconds a day. Although remember, that could be atypical. And lastly, let's talk about the strap or straps in this case, which is actually a pleasant surprise, as well as whatever the heck this thing is. The strap that came with the watch is this black leather one with white stitching, and the second one is a matching brown leather. Although there's no hardware on that second one, so you would have to swap that. While the straps are a little thin, I think they're actually pretty good, and much better than what you'd normally expect to get with an AliExpress watch. They feel like a good quality leather, and they seem to have a good balance of stiffness and flexibility. So they're not floppy, but they won't require too much of a break-in period either. The hardware is good, but I think it looks a little small. In fact, if I had one complaint about the strap, it would be how it tapers, where it starts out at 22 millimeters, but goes all the way down to 18 at the buckle. The strap still wears fine. In fact, I think it's actually rather comfortable, but I think it just looks visually off and maybe a little drastic. And also, if you do have a smaller wrist, then this strap may not work for you. With my 7 inch wrist, I was only at the third hole. Now the Parnas does wear rather comfortably on that strap, so I think the tapering actually does help in that regard. But I think it still feels like a larger watch. The watch may be a 42mm, but I'd say it wears closer to 43, maybe even a little larger, which in a large part is due to its square case as well as longer lugs. But also, a good chunk of that is the case back itself, which is really what's in contact with your wrist, and here it's already 40 millimeters wide, and the lugs don't really sweep down much to help counteract that. So if you think this might be too big for you, 
then you're probably right and best to err on the side of caution. And regardless of how it wears, I think it actually looks larger than it is as well. Which, depending on what you want, can be a good or bad thing. If you're really looking for something more subtle, then this probably isn't it. Yet if you want something a little different, with a rather big presence, then this could be your huckleberry. Overall, I really like the look of the Parnas. Not only is the dial great looking, but it just has this really unique effect with that groove dial. Yet at the same time, I really wasn't left the same feeling I had when I looked at the Railmaster homage, where I wanted to eventually get the Omega. Here I think the Parnas is cool, but I don't really think it's me. Although I think it might be a little bit better if they'd kept to the 40mm width of the real thing, as I think this one is a little large. But if you're okay with that, then I think it's easily worth the $100 price tag that you can find it for. Not only does it look great, but it has a solid build quality, sapphire, and good straps. I really wish the loom on the hands was better, but I could really say the same thing about almost every watch from AliExpress. Although since the loom on the dial itself is actually pretty good, this could make an interesting mod project if you could find some hands that would go with it, which is what I would do if I was actually going to keep it. But I'm not, since I'm giving it away right now. And the winner of the Parnas is Scott Sandora. And if I haven't contacted you already, I will be shortly. And as I get closer to 10,000 subscribers, I'll be announcing a newer, bigger giveaway. So keep an eye out for that. Yet for those other two watches I showed in that initial video, I'll also get to them as soon as I can, and the carnival with the quadrant dial will probably be first, but I do have a busy couple of months ahead of me, so it might take me some time. Now as usual, let me know what you think about the Parnas in the comments below, and for the rest of you, well, I'll see you again real soon.